Okay, here we go. Back at it. So we just wrapped up the first turn of the Objective Moscow and interesting game, it's fun. There's uh, certainly some gamey aspects to it in terms of the way the rules are structured for air combat and uh, in, indeed even the scenarios, you know, the scenario rules really kind of drive your behavior to uh, abandon certain areas and focus on others and things like that. And I would imagine with deeper, richer, more experienced play, uh, there, there's certainly some things that both sides could do to the other to foil plans in general. Uh, the gameplay, and this is one turn's experience, but you can kind of get a pretty straightforward feel for this. It's only nine pages of rules. Your movement is movement, it's very straightforward. Zone to control costs plus one to exit, which means that you there's you don't have to stop when you hit a zone of control. You can keep moving through zones of control if you have movement points. Every unit has either two movement points or five movement points pretty much, unless you're a hovercraft and you have seven. So that means that while you can move through lines, if they're not, you know, if everyone's not adjacent and you leave a gap, you're rolling through that bad boy. And uh, of course that does put you in a certain difficult circumstances, mainly supply and supply rules are fairly straightforward as well. You check supply at the point of movement and or the point of combat. And both sides have different rules. Basically the US have to be able to trace back to a road and the Soviets have to trace back to a supply, a rail head or railroad that ends in an urban center or an industrial center, I think it is, one of the two. So actually the Chinese, it's an urban center and the Soviets, it's a uh, industrial center or a refinery. refinery. Maybe that's for movement, who freaking knows? Anyway, that's kind of it, it's straightforward. So, but if you do move to try and encircle something, when you do go to check supply at the point of contact, point of combat, it's going to have an impact, right? So uh, that's that's an important consideration to take into account when you're attacking. But otherwise, other than that, it's very straightforward. Now, the air war that uh, everyone was warning me about, and uh, you know, it's broken, and you should use a different system. Well, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funky. Uh, there's this interception phase which occurs after movement, and so once you the uh, the enemy has put down the active player has put down his air units where he wants them, the <coughs> the defending or non-active player gets to uh, put uh, interception units down to combat that attack, that air attack. And you just gross up, so you have this interception combat and every unit, the first unit has to be attacked by at least one to one and every other unit uh, could be attacked after that. Now, not everyone has to be attacked, but you probably want to try to attack everybody to, you know, get a, a attacker retreat, or sorry, a defender retreat or an exchange or something like that. Otherwise, those combat factors go through. And you've got a heavy bomber or the, you know, the large Soviet bombers, you're adding 25 combat factors to an attack. Similarly, for fighter bombers, it's 10 or 15 or something like that. In fact, for the US, it's, uh, it's 10. So that's a significant increase in the combat capability of an attack when you're looking at maybe attacking 10, let's say you're attacking 10 or 15 factors and you've got 24 factors, so you've got two to one. If you bring a bomber in with 25 factors, it's gonna you know, bump up your odds significantly. So it's probably a little bit out of whack there. So I can see why people don't like that. But here's the thing, if you don't bring air to the battle, the enemy doesn't get to bring air to the battle either. So they're, they're excluded from doing any sort of an interception or uh, you know, uh, final protective fire type of thing uh, or, or any of that. So, so that uh, is strange. So if, you've got re if you think you've got really good odds and once everyone's started to be flipped, you know how many combat factors you're attacking with, you can start gaming the system a little bit and going, well, you know, I won't use air there. I'll use air over on this other attack where it's, where it's more needed. And, uh, and the enemy can't do anything about it. They can't put air in to, to change the odds. So, and plus, you can't put air in to change the odds anyway. You can only negate the attacker's air that comes in. So that's a, a, an important distinction to make. You're not adding defensive value with air. And I think clearly as um, 
you know, modern doctrine would probably lead us to believe that uh, air is a, a pretty important a aspect of the combined arms battle. So I think it, the game kind of misses things on that point. Uh, it's pretty easy as the uh, as, as you've probably seen from some of the live play and uh, I'll be posting some more pictures but uh, it's good to be the attacker it's good to be the attacker with uh, you know uh, four to one or better odds you've got a couple of chances of an exchange but basically you know the, the table is pretty linear but from seven to one onwards you have you know one chance in six of uh, incurring the wrath of the ex of an exchange and I have something stuck on my t-shirt. What is that? And uh, 10 to 1, it's automatic kill. Those odds are hard to get when you're fighting the big US divisions, but when you're, you're beating up on the, the People's Republic of China, that's really straightforward. You can get 10 to 1 with a pretty modest stack. Uh, 5 to 1 and 6 to 1, now you've got uh, uh, one chance in 6 of incurring an exchange. And then you know you get some D threes and D twos and things like that. So it's pretty bloody, uh, which I would expect you know a modern combat to be bloody like that. So let's keep in mind here we're we're looking at uh, future combat from a design based in 1978. Fast forwarding to 1998, 20 years in the future, looking at how combat might work. Right. Uh, so it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to keep playing for a little bit. I'm probably not going to play out the whole 26 turns because I don't think it'll, it'll last that long. Because uh, the attrition is horrendous. Uh, in turn one, two, four, six, nine Soviet air units out of the game. Two, four, six, eight, ten US uh, air units out of the game. And uh, I'm going to call that 10 or 12 Soviet divisions, some of them category one, good stuff have been lost and uh, also four or five uh, US mechanized and armored divisions have been knocked out as well. So this game is going to be a very sparsely populated map uh, pretty soon. Although replacement rates are fairly high, uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to keep up with the, the death toll, the way things are going. So I'm going to keep at it. Talk to you soon uh, in a little bit more. We'll check back in probably uh, turn three. I'm running, uh, please note that I am running I do live play, if you're sharing that or commenting on the blog, and only on the blog, uh, sharing anywhere, commenting on the blog and letting me know your Twitter handle or your Facebook handle or whatever it may be from your share, that's gonna get you in the running to win a magazine. It's $26 magazine, counterfact uh, issue four. Just letting you know that, talk to you soon. Hope you have a chance to win. More, more soon on uh, Objective Moscow, bye.